Hello, Cycle Cart folks. Uh, reporting to you here from my newly cleaned up shop, working on the Vulture. Uh, got the goalie gear over there. We're going to do a video today as I show you my uh, bench with my Senna stuff and so on. Uh, we're going to do a video today about how to create a scale plan for a Cycle Cart build. And it's a pretty clever way, I think, and it's pretty easy. So I thought I would give you uh, all a look into how to do it. Uh, just as a warning, I don't edit videos anymore. I just kind of shoot and post. So if it's not smooth, it's not smooth. And if I make mistakes, then I make mistakes, and that's how it goes. So I'm going to get the camera uh, situated here on a... Um, like a overhanging whatever the heck this is, and we're going to look at my notebook, and I'm going to go through how I scale um, the plans for a cycle cart to get all the measurements that you need to make it cycle cart sized. Let's set the camera up here. Okay, so we got our camera set up and I'm gonna sort of roughly see if you can see there because I can't really see the screen. Um, but anyway, hopefully you can see that. So what we're talking about is scaling your cycle cart build to get it to a cycle cart size, but to keep the proportions of the original car. So it starts with something like this. Uh, this is a um, schematic, I guess that's what it's called, of the car I'm building next, the Tatra T12 uh, Targa Florio, um, an excellent uh, old race car, which is uh, really cool, and I'm building it. And almost no matter what car you're building, you can find something like this on the internet, like a Google search, and it'll have essentially this layout, the side view, the top view, the back view, the front, and often it'll be aligned so that it's all in scale, right? These are all in the same scale. So you get this, and then what you need to do is put a grid work over it, okay? You can do that a number of different ways. You can, uh, as you'll notice, I've got a notebook here with a, uh, you know, graph paper in it. Um, this is the same thing I used for the Vulture, and I'm using it for the Tatra. I've even got my Tatra uh, logo. What you can do if you're low tech and the cycle card is all about low tech, which is absolutely fine. You can take this, uh, your picture and put it underneath the uh, paper. I don't know if you can see that on video, but you can see through it and maybe you can trace it out then and um, then you, you'll have your picture on the grid work or you can tape the piece of paper to the grid. Or alternatively, you can take one of these, either rip it out of the book or just get a graph paper and put it in your computer printer and print this on top of this. You can do that too. Um, what I ended up doing was, let me put this back. What I ended up doing was this. I put it in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, and then I put a grid work over top of it. Okay, so you got your car with your grid squares on it and this is what you need to get started on making the grid. Okay. Um, so once you've got the car on or your schematic on a grid, then you're probably wondering, okay, how do I uh, get a scale for this? Like how am I, what do I know about the real car and how big was it and so on and so forth. Turns out you don't really need to know a lot about the original car. You just need to know that you're going to be using your wheel as your sort of main point of knowledge or uh, like a, uh, how do I put this, kind of like an anchor, I guess, for making the rest of the uh, car the right size. So you'll notice the wheel on this drawing, I hope you can see what I'm pointing to. I can't really see my screen, so hopefully this works. Um, the wheel is uh, the wheel rim obviously is right there and it is one, two, three, four squares wide. Okay. And we know that the wheel rim on a cycle cart is 17 inches. And therefore, uh, you divide 17 by four because it's four squares wide. And what do you get for all you math deficient folks out there? myself included, four and a quarter, 4.25. So that's our scale. So now on this page, 
each square is four and a quarter inches. Okay, so then you can start getting stuff like all the measurements you want. You can figure everything out. You can figure out wheelbase if you just go from the middle of the wheel to the middle of the wheel and you'd count squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen and a half wheelbase, right? Seventeen point five squares and then you multiply by 4.25 because each of the squares is four and a quarter inches. So then you've got 17.5 times 4.25 equals, that's times 4.25 inches equals 74, my nice uh, pencil here, 74.375, which is what, like, uh, what's 0.375? Two fifths. Um, in any case, 74 and a bit inches. That's your wheelbase. Wheel base. Okay. And then you can measure anything like that. You can take the, say, this little gas tank, you can take the height of the gas tank if you want. You can take the distance between the, um, uh, the end of the cockpit and the nose. You can take the height from the, from the front axle to the top of the car, let's say, if you wanted to do that, you'd have uh, one, two, three, four and a half. So that would be your height. So four and a half times four and a half, sorry, four and a half times 4.25. So I know for instance, that the height from the front axle to the top of the hood is gonna be 19.125 inches. So you can get every measurement like that on the car that you want to get. And you'll need them, right? You'll need to know sort of how wide it is at the cockpit, how wide it is at the front axle, if you want it to look right, if you want it to look in proportion. And if you want it to look like the original car, just shrunk down a little bit. It's supposed to be, it's not supposed to, well, it can be whatever you want it to be because it's a cycle car. But it's a caricature, right? You're making a caricature, but you kind of also want it to be like, oh, that really looks like the original car. At least I do anyway. So you do that. Additionally, what you can do, once you've got this grid work done, you can cut a little piece out of the corner and use it as like a little ruler. So for instance, you know, you want to, let's say you want to measure the distance from the axle, the front axle to the steering wheel. Okay. Cause you want that distance cause you want to make it look correct. It's a diagonal, so it's kind of hard to measure on the picture. You just take the grid work that you had. You can print a separate one up on a separate sheet of paper. I just happened to cut mine from the top corner. And you can go like this. Measure like that. And you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 times 4.25. 11 times 4.25. 46 uh 0.75 inches and you know that's the distance from there to there you can measure the steering wheel like that how big is the steering wheel supposed to be you can go like this this steering wheel is supposed to be one two three squares three times 4.25 so you know that your steering wheel is going to be 12.75 inches okay you can go through the whole car like that every measurement you need to know your uh, wheel, uh, your wheel ba base. No, that's wheel base is this. What's this? Uh, the track, track width. You can measure that. So you can get all your measurements and then you can alter them if you need to. Okay. If you uh, don't want a track width that big, you can squeeze it in a little bit, make adjustments, but at least you're starting from what you know to be correct, which means what you know is going to look like the original car. One note to make on that, and that is once you have the picture and a grid work together, you can blow it up or shrink it down as long as both things, the grid and the picture are together and blown up or shrunk down by the same amount. Okay. You cannot, or I mean you can, but if you, uh, take the picture and make it bigger, but keep the grid the same, you're going to have to redo this calculation about what the actual scale is. You're going to have to go back to the wheel, 
figure out how many squares per wheel and make this scale new again because you've changed the uh, size of the grid compared to the size of the car. But if you keep this the same, you could theoretically take this and blow it up to like a poster size, hang it on your, you know, shop wall, uh, do even a big, if you wanted to do a big uh, life-size one and do a projection. I've seen some people who take a video, not a video, but like a projector and make a picture and a slide or something like that or one of those little old overhead projectors uh, that we used to have in school. You could do that. So that is really the way to scale every part of the car to cycle card size. You're going to find maybe that the cockpit, this distance here, is a little small for a person to get into. That's where you start making some slight changes, okay? Maybe you take the uh, end of the cockpit over. And as a matter of fact, I've done that here. You can see that I've decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'll sacrifice the proportion of the hood and make it. I decided to pull it over sort of by two squares to give myself a little more room to fit into the cockpit, right? I'm a big fellow. I don't want to be squeezed in there, as I learned from the vulture. So you can make little modifications after that, and now you can make a new measurement. Okay, how long is my hood? Well, my hood is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares before it begins to curve off. Nine times 4.25. 38.25 inches. So I know this whole uh, distance is 38.25. I can draw it on there if I want. Then you can get in there and start drawing the plans for whatever you're building. This this is my idea. The blue part is my idea for the frame of the cycle cart. So I, I can measure, not only can I measure the lengths of everything, I can measure this height difference. I can measure where these... Um, cuts are going to be when I do my uh, sort of welding thing The you know you get your piece of side rail and you want to make it do this well you have to have two points where you make angles so you can measure all that together um and then you can go from there uh you can do hand drawings on your um on your new uh you know grid work like I did here my first idea for a frame looked like this and then I realized, well, maybe I'm not going to, maybe I'm not going to do that. And then I did another one where the seat moves and that kind of thing. So you draw up all your ideas and they're all to scale. Then you can kind of see, you can put a person in here. You sort of measure like, you know, how big is my head? How big, uh, like how tall am I, right? You can measure all that and stick yourself in the cycle cart really before you start actually building anything. So it does come in kind of handy. So that, my friends is how you can fairly easily scale a cycle cart. And that's that. That's how you do it. That's how I did the Vulture originally. And the Vulture is a little tight, I have to admit. But um, that's how I'm going to do the new uh, Tatra T12. So uh, good luck with your build. And um, feel free to leave a comment down here with questions or anything. I'm glad to answer them. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.